Hello and welcome to Hamer Reviews. My name is Christopher Hamer and today we're going to be taking a closer look at the Sonos Beam Gen 2. Now before we get into the review, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already because it really does help and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. The Sonos Beam Gen 2 was released last year. Um, I actually got it on launch day, planned to do launch videos and so on, didn't get around to it for various reasons. However, after quite a few months with it, I'm ready to give it a full review. Now this soundbar costs £450, which although not cheap, does put it on the budget end of the spectrum. It differs from the Gen 1 in that it has full Dolby Atmos support, which is something the first generation did not have. It still has five drivers and Rather than the Gen 1 being in three arrays, you actually have five arrays. So each is an independent, can be independently operated by the um, Sonos Beam Gen 2. A lot of this has been made possible by fitting this with the processing unit, I believe, from the Sonos Arc, which is this big, which is the bigger brother of the uh, Sonos Beam. In fact, it's twice the size and also twice the cost at 900 pounds, which is no longer cheap. So, Overall, um, this is a budget uh, soundbar, I think, ish. Not that £450 is cheap, but it is very compatible with a lot of different TVs and should really improve your movie or TV watching experience while still having a lot of smart features which make it a very capable smart speaker as well. Now, just taking a look at installing this initially, it is fairly simple. So on the back, it comes with a AC power adapter and you also get a HDMI to optical adapter and then you have a HDMI cable. Now, HDMI is the main way you would want to connect this because this has both ARC and eARC, which is a um, audio format. It's an electronic audio return channel and audio return channel um, is basically what those two things mean. And basically you plug in your HDMI cable into your uh, Sonos Beam and then you plug it into your TV on the input that is marked ARC or eARC and this will automatically um, sync up and share the audio from the TV and take over that uh, responsibility basically with no delay and with essentially very little fuss. You will also be able to control this from the TV's remote. Um, essentially when you change the volume on the TV it will just change on here instead. It also has an ethernet port so that if you have Wi-Fi issues, you can still set it up and get it going. It does require that. Um, and also if you just don't want to use Wi-Fi, that is your option too. So the inclusion of an optical adapter for the HDMI port is pretty interesting as well. Now, the reason for that is you might have a television that doesn't have ARC or eARC, but it might have an optical port, which would actually allow you to connect this via an optical cable to your television. Um, you could also, I assume, go so far as to use a digital to analog converter, potentially, um, and then actually take the digital to analog um, audio from your television. But I think that that might be getting a bit much if you're using like an optical converter in the middle. So those are your options anyway. Now, on the top, you have some touch sensitive controls. You have a smart play pause button. I say smart because this is a smart speaker and will work with your smart um, assistant of choice, volume down, volume up, and you have a microphone mute button because obviously this has microphones built in in order to do all those wonderful smart things. This is very reliant on the app um, that Sonos has to set it up. Uh, it even has an NFC chip built in. So if you're an Apple phone hold, uh, user, you at one point can just hold it to the uh, Sonos Beam Gen 2 and it will exchange data and just start the setup process. The app is pretty good. Um, I did run into some issues hooking this up to my Wi-Fi network. It might be because it was a Wi-Fi 6 network, but um, yeah, just had to reset the um, soundbar a couple of times till it connected and worked. But once that happened, it was all good. And then once you've installed the app and connected it all up and it's done its setup process, at which point it will also update its firmware usually. Um, I found that I uh, could go through the um, TruePlay um, setup, which is essentially a audio um, optimization tool where you take your iPhone, you activate it on the app and you're sort of waving your phone around uh, the room in walking around it and it will measure the room and it will optimize the drivers. And that's where that five speaker array comes in versus three, gives you more customizability and in theory, better sound. So as I've mentioned, this has full Dolby Atmos, which is interesting because this only has five speakers. Now this has no upwards firing speakers um, and it still can produce very convincing surround sound. 
The Sonos Arc does have 11 speakers, of which two are upwards firing, so it does actually provide a slightly more convincing Atmos experience, but I'd say this is to within 10% of that. That is a bold claim, but I genuinely think this sounds to within 10% as good as the Sonos Arc at twice the cost, um, and as a result, it's why I really like the Beam over the Arc. The Beam Gen 2 is very simple to use, as I've mentioned, a case of just plugging in the HDMI cable, letting it do its thing. I actually have an older television set that um, only has Arc and didn't have any issues setting it up or using it. It does mean you don't get Dolby Atmos because you need a Dolby Atmos compatible television set in order to use um, Dolby Atmos on the soundbar. Now, although that's a tad frustrating, in my case, I've hooked it up to a different device and I did get to enjoy Atmos and it was very convincing actually. Um, but it, it is one of those things that you're gonna run into if you have an older television set. If you have a new television, this will just work. One of the things I do really like about the um, Sonos Beam Gen 2 is it actually has two mounting points and you can buy a mount from Sonos to mount it below your television, or you can even buy, I think it's a combined television and Sonos Beam mount, um, so that's quite cool. And then you have sound quality, which is probably the most important thing. And I think this does sound very good. As I said, the surround sound is very convincing, but perhaps more importantly, the actual sound coming from the speaker is very good. Now the true play tuning does help because obviously you're tuning it to the room you're in and it'll it'll improve the sound a little bit, but also just generally the bass response is good, the um, high sound good, the mid range is definitely there. It just provides a, a nice all round experience for listening to either music or indeed movies and TV shows, which is probably what this is designed for. It is more at the budget end of the soundbar spectrum, so it's going up, up against things like the Bose 300 series, and I think actually Bose has recently brought out even a new soundbar that, that goes up against this even more directly. But it, I think in terms of the compatibility with other devices, so this has full AirPlay 2, it kind of wins out, and then the sound quality element is where it really wins out. I just think it provides a really nice sound for a small to medium sized room. The sound is gonna deteriorate if you're using it in a really big room. And I think at that point, you should be considering a dedicated um, hi-fi setup or indeed something like the Arc. But there are ways to get even better sound out of the speaker. And that is by adding additional Sonos speakers. So for instance, I have here a Sonos One. Now the Sonos One will sync up with this and if you have two of them, it will provide additional two channels, which you could either have to the side of you, or indeed you could have behind you for an even better surround sound experience. You can also add the Sonos subwoofer, which is gonna add really deep bass. Uh, it's extremely expensive, but the actual experience will be massively enhanced. And I think they even do in ceiling speakers if you really wanted to create that experience. So for instance, if you just wanted something this size, even in a larger room, you could add those additional speakers to create a really nice um, surround sound system that's very, very, very capable, um, but just at increased cost. But if you are in a smaller to medium room, I think this is one of the best soundbars you can get. I think it looks good. I like the fact it has a small footprint. So anything larger than like a 37 inch TV, this will be um, smaller than, and because it's so simple to use, it's not a case of turning something on, it will always work, you don't need a different remote, it's just extremely simple. Listening to music on this is very good too. It has Apple AirPlay 2, so streaming from an iOS device is super easy. You can also use the Sonos app across all um, smartphones, and it's a very good listening experience. I, I think I've listened to music on this quite a few times and just enjoyed it because it's it's very easy listening. It's not the most precise speaker you're ever gonna listen to, but it's definitely very good for 450 pounds or even quite a bit more. Having spent that time with the Sonos Arc as well, I don't think that the Sonos Arc is necessarily that great value anymore. I did think it initially when it came out um, in 2020, but now we've got the Beam Gen 2, I think this delivers 80 to 90% of the performance for half the cost. And if you were to add two of these um, Sonos One speakers, which uh, cost around 200 pounds each, I think you'd have a better experience than the um, Sonos Arc, which is saying something because it would still be cheaper than the uh, Sonos Arc. 
The subwoofer is very expensive, but I think the Arc needs that as much as this does, um, if you want that sort of really deep, big bass um, for like explosions in movies and so on. So at that point, you're not winning anything either. Coming back to the app, there's some really nice features that I want to call out there. So obviously you have that tuning mode we've already discussed, but it also has a night mode, which I think is really cool. So if you have neighbors living next door um, and you don't want to disturb them at night, you can kind of cut off the bass a bit, cut off the highs a bit, lets the sound travel a bit less, which I think is a really neat feature. You have a volume limiter. So if you have kids, you don't want them listening too loud or indeed annoying your neighbors, you can limit the volume to what you consider as an acceptable level. And then no matter what you turn it up to on the television, it's not going to get any louder than that. You also have um, inside the Sonos app all of the, the things like um, treble and bass adjustments, so really good EQ settings. I, I really like that they've included those. Don't get me wrong, they're not the best on the market, but they are very good and, and it allows you to tweak the sound to what you like. So for instance, with me, I've actually turned the bass up on this a little bit just to provide a slightly fuller sound, a slightly bigger experience because we don't have the subwoofer. Um, and I think that's a, a really effective way of doing it. Lastly, obviously the app uh, integrates with whichever music streaming platform you use and also has radio stations. So this is really easy to just use as a radio if you want to um, when you're not using television and is a super simple, easy experience. Overall, I think that the Sonos Beam Gen 2 is incredibly good value for money given that it can do things like Dolby Atmos, it has all the streaming capabilities. It's just an extremely flexible soundbar, which is something that I always appreciate. It's always nice when something can do more than one job really well. It'll massively enhance the experience of the majority of televisions, even some of those OLED TVs that use the entire panel as a speaker. I've never been that impressed by. And honestly, I think that this is a worthwhile upgrade of the majority of televisions. And in my case, where my television's a bit older, it's an older 3D Samsung unit, it's kind of given it a new lease of life because the thing that really bugged me about it was sound. So when, for instance, you're watching a movie, this just really enhances the experience. Or for instance, if you're playing like a console, you'll find that this really enhances that experience too because the sound is just so much better. You can hear footsteps if someone's coming up behind you much more accurately. You can um, enjoy the sound of, say, racing cars when you're playing a racing game. You just get a lot more flexibility and a lot more enjoyment from that experience. So there you have it, there's the Sonos Beam Gen 2, £450, I think an incredibly good deal. Um, I don't think there's much that comes too close to it on the market, but if you have any questions about it, pop them in the comments section below. And as I said at the start, please do like the video if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching, and I do hope I see you again next time. Goodbye.